I'm going to be building a modern Adirondack chair and it started as a modern lounge chair for my living room. I didn't like the, the design on it and I never really fell in love with it and I didn't want to throw away the design so I saw it as an Adirondack chair and I think it looks really nice. It's going to be a really cool build and let's kind of dive into what that build's going to look like. So I cut templates out that are actually going to help me with the build. This will help me process the, the lumber so I can make these parts um, but it also helps me visualize what this thing's going to look like in the real world. I mean, it won't look like MDF, it's gonna look like really pretty eucalyptus, but this helps a lot. So what I'm gonna go with is one piece of complicated joinery, and it's not that complicated, it's gonna be a big mortise and tenon here, but the rest is just gonna be screws that are plugged, and it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm down here picking out my wood, I'm looking for really wide planks. Fortunately, most of this is really wide. I also wanna get some pieces that have a lot of really nice character in them, mostly for the hand rests and the visible parts like the long rails and the legs. So I wanna make this look really nice. I mean, these are gonna be for me, so, and I have a lot of wood to choose from, so let's make it look cool. Uh, I'm also trying to avoid a lot of checking. So there's some checking on the edge here, but it doesn't continue far in, and I'm gonna to need to cut this down anyway during the milling process. So this is gonna be a good board to use for sure. I am also gonna look for, Similar colors, this is, oh no, that looks great. Yeah, no, a lot of these boards are really pretty actually. As you can see here, I am laying out my templates and rough marking them up so I can start cutting everything out on the bandsaw and then taking it over to do the milling process. You'll notice that everything is along the long grain. I'm trying to maximize my long grain here. Like these long straight faces, they are following the grain exactly. And that is because I wanna have as much long grain because it is the way to make these parts be as strong as possible. Now, obviously, it wouldn't work this way anyway because there's not enough board here, but this would make for a very weak piece of wood if I was running the wood this way. So hopefully that makes sense. That's what we're gonna do for this. Everything is all milled to its final thickness. Obviously, when everything was planed, I lost my marks on there, which is fine. I, I wanted, they served their purpose. I wanted to know what parts were gonna go where so I can cut them down to the rough lengths. So now I'm going to be throwing these back on here. I have my templates marked and I have the boards marked for which templates go on here. So I'm gonna get going on those and then I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut the rough parts out and then after that, we're gonna get them flushed up to their final size. I like to use this really thick chisel tip Magnum black Sharpie for this because it creates a really large kerf that gives me some fluff space for when I'm cutting this out. So you can see this isn't right up against the template here. I have all this extra space for when I'm cutting it out on the bandsaw. It makes for a really nice uh, wiggle room so you don't make any boo-boos. I've got four unique parts here. Two of them have some inside angles and two of them don't. So those ones with the outside angles, they don't matter. But these ones with the inside angles, I have to get really close to the line here. I'm gonna show you why I have to do that after I cut them out on the bandsaw. With our template attached to our rough pieces, we now need to flush trim the rest of the material off and get it to this shape. And the option you see the most often in the community is with the router table. The other option, one that I love and I'm a proponent of, is the L fence. So it's gonna follow along through here and it's using the template along this straight edge to cut the same profile. And the outside edge of the blade is matched up to the outside edge of the L fence. And that's great for these outside angles where you have these outside angles, it works great. It does not work on these inside angles. So let's say we're riding along the template here. As soon as we get to this inside angle, it starts to kick out and it just stops working and it completely eliminates the usefulness of the L fence. And that's when you have to go over to the router table and flush trim that away.
that's layout. <laughs> this looks really cool. I'm really excited about this. This is a, the, sorry, I'm still like kind of getting over how pretty the wood is. Like it really is very pretty wood. The, 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 the eucalyptus is very pretty stuff, but we've got our basic layout here. This is the first time seeing it out of the real wood. I'm really pumped on this. I'm super excited to get going on the next steps. We're going to do a traditional mortise and tenon here. This is going to be just screwed. Honestly, it's going to be pre-drilled, screwed and plugged. I'm going to do, I'm going to make plugs out of more of this eucalyptus because that'll look super nice and clean. And we're going to do the same here. I got to make a little knee brace here. My thought process on that is when people are sitting in the chair, they're probably going to lift and then push down with all their weight on this joint. So there's going to be a lot of stress on this joint here. So I really want to make this really strong and make sure everything's held together really tight because people are going to use this to get out of the chair. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a mortise and tenon here. I'm going to be doing that on the Panther router. I have the Panther router. It's a really great joinery machine. Not very many people have it, which is unfortunate because it is really a great tool. But you can do your mortise and tenon on the table saw and a drill press and clean it out with chisels. Go, it worked just as well. This is just a lot faster. The Panther router uses these templates. These are actually two to one. So this is a three, ooh, which size is this? This is a three inch mortise we're gonna make. So this is actually six inch wide, so two to one. I'm gonna go a little deeper than inch and a half because I want an inch and a half tenon and I wanna have enough room for the glue. The mortises are cut and now I'm going to do the tenons and that's the order of operations on the panda router. You want to do your mortises first and then cut your tenons to fit that. Cool thing about the panda router is you use the same template to cut the mortise as you do the tenon and we're going to follow the outside of the template and that shape will cut our tenon. That's nice. I'm gonna take the pieces apart here and I'm gonna start adding the cleats to the backs and the seat so that we can start getting the slats on here for the backrest and the seat rest. All right, I just cut out my cleats. I've got two short cleats and two long cleats. The short cleats are for the backrest and the long cleats are for the butt rest. All this material is milled to the same thickness so I made two extra blocks as well that are three and a quarter inches long. And the thickness is really what matters. So the thickness of the material is that. That's our thickness. And that's how thick the slats are as well. And we're gonna use that to determine how far back we set our cleats on here so that the cleats, or so that the actual slats sit flush against the fronts. On the butt rest, there's gonna be five slats across here and each one's gonna have a spacer of a half an inch. So what I did is I made these little like story stick jig things. So I'm gonna use this like this. I wrote up on there because as you can see, I already put it on there wrong to show you. So I've got the up facing there so I don't make any mistakes. I'm gonna make this flush with the end. I'm gonna make this flush with the end and I'm gonna mark this up on the center line and keep it flush all the way down and that's how I'm gonna keep everything in line for my screws. And our marks are good to go. So I can pre-drill these out. I don't wanna drill straight into this. This eucalyptus is, is extremely hard and I'm gonna use some pretty big screws so it'll for sure crack this wood. So I'll pre-drill these out, we'll get these set and then I'm gonna pre-drill from the bottom as well to have screws come from underneath to drill into the slats so that you actually don't see any of the fasteners when you're sitting on the chair. First set of screws are set. So we have our cleat in place and we're ready to start putting our slats in. Well, we're ready to start drilling for our slats. The problem is when you turn on its side, the cleat is kind of sticking past here and it's like that on all the parts too. That's not one. Oh yeah, just right here. 
it's sticking past the bottom here. So we have a very small amount of material that we actually need to trim off and kind of flush trim up. So normally I'd just use the L fence on the table saw, but because it's pretty close to some screw heads, I'm not gonna risk it. I don't wanna trigger the saw stop and that'd just be a real pain in the neck. So I'm gonna go cut this down on the bandsaw and then flush trim it on the router table. I've decided that for the mortise and tenon, I actually wanna use a draw bore pin to pull this together and that'll save me from having to come up with some sort of contraption to pull this together with clamps and calls and stuff. So I'm gonna get this set up. We're gonna set this in place. I'm gonna drill a hole I'm gonna make some pegs and pins, and we're gonna set up and I'll show you how I do my draw board. I'm using a 3 8 plug cutter here. I got on Amazon, I'll put the link down below. But basically, I'm gonna cut this 3 8 plug out. I'm gonna cut a few of them just in case I make a mistake. Because it happens. I make mistakes a lot. This eucalyptus is super hard stuff, so it smokes a lot. We've got a three inch mortise and tenon, and what I wanna do is put two pins through this. I'm gonna take this three quarter inch setup block, I'm gonna put this to the edge of the cheek, I'm gonna take my little mini square, remove this, strike this line here, and there we're three quarter inch in. Now we're gonna draw another line, three quarter inches from the top, and there's our two points we're gonna drill through over on the drill press. I've got my through hole and I've got my tenon already in place. I need to do the same thing over here. I need to put that on here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bit, I'm gonna put it in the middle here. I'm gonna use my mallet. I'm gonna set that center plate, center of the hole with this bit. With my centers of my holes marked, I'm gonna pop this joint, or I'm gonna pop this joint apart. Now I have a mark on here. And what I want to do is take my drill bit, put it back in the drill press, and we're going to move just up, just slightly. What happens is when the pin goes through the cheek here, it'll go through the tenon, and because it's up a little bit, it'll pull it down, and it'll seat the shoulder real tight in here. With that all glued up, I'm gonna let that set up for a little bit. So for now, I'm going to start cutting down my slats to size. They're gonna be 18 inches long, and then I'm gonna take them over and pre-drill them so that I don't have them explode when I throw a screw into them. I wanted to do a quick mock-up because I wanted to see it, and honestly, like, looks really good. I really like how this looks a lot. Like, I'm really excited to finish this up. There's not a whole lot left to do. It's a bunch of little busy work kind of stuff. I need to attach the slats. I'm gonna make a knee brace here. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of weight pressed down on this. When people are getting out of the chair, they're gonna push down with their hands, so there needs to be a really strong connection here. So I'm gonna make that a mechanical connection. For the front, I wanna do another slat right here following this angle, but I'm gonna do a real heavy round over here because this is where people's knee pit is, and you just want that to be really smooth and soft. And then everything is gonna get a bunch of round over profiles because there's gonna be people touching and their hands are gonna be all over this and you just want it to be really comfortable. So uh, that is gonna be the next steps. This is falling apart. We better get out of here and get going on that right now. <laughs> One of the more difficult parts of the assembly that I anticipated was gonna be lining up this leg with with this horizontal stretchery leg thingy here. So what I did is I made this template and that will be available in the templates or in the files if you decide to get those down below in the description. But basically this template fills in this negative space here and gives me a little cleat to put this on so I know exactly where it goes. To attach these two pieces, I'm gonna be using bolts and honestly, I hate that idea, <laughs> but I think it's the best idea. 
I really don't like exposed hardware in anything I build, but this is an exterior piece and really it kind of just makes the most sense. I thought about doing screws from the inside so you wouldn't see them, but those are gonna come loose eventually. I mean, really these are gonna come loose too, but you can easily tighten them and it just makes the most sense. I'm gonna have two bolts here so this piece can't rack back and forth and I don't wanna put too much stress on the joint that I'm gonna do up here for the hand rest. Okay, so both sides are now put together and now I'm gonna take them apart <laughs> because I gotta sand everything and get the finish on there and we're gonna add some profiling too. So I wanted to show the difference between the two options I was thinking about, which is an eighth inch round over and a quarter inch round over. I wanna go with the quarter inch round over, but I'm only gonna do it on the tops and on the bottoms, I will just break it with the sander. So it'll just have a smooth touch to it and nothing will chip off that way too. But this quarter inch round over is gonna be nice along the whole top, it'll feel really good and it just has a really nice profile. So like I said, we'll do it to the tops only, not the bottoms and then the outside faces, these outside edges, the inside edges will just get broken by hand. Before I take this over to round over the hand rest, I wanted to go over something that I realized. This was going to have a round over around the entire top, but I don't want that. I'm gonna actually stop it five inches forward. Also, I realized that I wanted to have a miter back here that follows this angle. So I quickly marked that, I'll transfer it over, and I'm only gonna remove just to the edge of this tip here, so it'll follow this miter down to here. slats outside, I'm gonna start getting finish on here. I'm gonna use tongue oil. It's readily available, easy to use, and it works great for exterior. So you just have to recoat it every year or so. It's just a wipe on, wipe off. It's an hour between wiping on and wiping off. And we're probably just gonna do the one coat for this and I'll reapply in a few months. So let's get going. All right, the 
finish is on and it's ready to start doing the final assembly here. I've got this clamp holding this top piece on the top of the backrest and a clamp holding the front piece on the seat. This is so that I have a you know relative alignment to start doing all the pre-drilling from the back and setting all the screws. So we're going into the final stretch here. I do have to make one more piece for the front, but after that, we're done and we got a really dope chair.